Welcome back to LFP Farm Life. This is Carrie Lee. And today we're going to do something a little bit easy for dinner. Neither one of us are feeling super great, so we didn't want anything really heavy. So we're going to do something really simple called broccoli and leek soup. I wanted to do a kakaliki soup, but when I went down into the freezer, I realized that I was missing an important ingredient. But I have plenty of my Azure broccoli available. So we decided that I am going to do some broccoli and leek soup. So first what we need to do is get our homemade croutons made. So what I did is I have some of our potato buns available. I don't have any of my sourdough bread made. I've got my sourdough starter here that is um, busy rising, so if I'm feeling up to it, I'm going to make a loaf of bread later tonight. But I do have some buns that I can make my croutons out of instead. So I just took three buns and I cubed those up and we're just going to do a real easy seasoning of, I think, garlic and thyme. So I just cubed that up and I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and some salt and pepper and some garlic and some thyme and if those are not your preferred flavors if you want something a little more simple or different flavors go ahead and use whatever you tend to like that's the fun thing about homemade croutons whatever your favorite is that's what you use Another thing that's really great with homemade croutons is Parmesan cheese. If you've got a grater that you can do really fine grades with, um, homemade or Parmesan cheese over the top is so delicious on croutons. So we're just going to do a little bit of salt because you are going to take your hands and kind of toss all your croutons together so that you make sure that everything is well seasoned so you don't end up with a hunk of seasoning in one spot. And then I had gotten some new measuring cups and measuring spoons because, oh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I had accidentally knocked over my ceramic ones that I absolutely loved and ended up smashing everything except for, I think, maybe my quarter cup, or was it my cup? No, it was my quarter cup, was the only thing that made it through. And I hadn't realized, because it's been a long time since I've bought measuring cups, how many different options are out there. And I had come across these ones that have these handles and you can choose what kind of handle you wanted. Oh no, you could only choose the type of finish on the measuring part. So I got the rose gold and then they come in a walnut handle. Well, my countertops on the center island and that flank here and that will eventually flank under those windows are out of walnut. So I thought, how cool is it gonna be that's gonna match that? So I got some rose gold ones with the walnut handles. I'm loving them so far. They're so convenient. They reach into my taller jars, easy peasy, and they're really easy to clean. I'm really liking them. So I'm gonna link them down below just in case you decide you wanna try them. Because they're easy to use, they reach into everything and they're easy to clean and they're pretty. Because I'm thinking I also wanna get something different to, um, put over the top of my mason jars for my seasonings because now that I'm keeping them out because the kitchen's been redesigned initially my stove was supposed to be where the patio doors were because there wasn't initially going to be patio doors in this kitchen and there wasn't going to be a pantry there initially this whole room back there was going to be a pantry room and there was just going to be a doorway here and then there was going to be a wall here. But um, when we started living in the house, we found out that, you know, things weren't quite as anticipated. So we had to make some adjustments so that there was a little more air movement 
because we were having problems with things freezing in this room. So, and because there's concrete underneath that floor, we couldn't run, um, oh, what is it called? Heating vents underneath there to get more heat in there. So we needed to do venting and airflow in other ways. So that just changed how the, how the rooms were going to be laid out and things just got turned around. So now that our croutons are laid out, let me flatten this out. So, whoa, flying bread. So let me toss that in the oven. And I just got my oven set at 375. Boom, croutons are done and in. Easy pleasy there. Now that my hands are covered in oil. Let me toss that in. And then the first thing we're gonna do is chop up our leeks. And my leeks are also from Azure. And these, if you remember, are from a Azure pickup, gosh, maybe January's pickup. So these have been around for quite some time. And I did chop off the root end and the top end because our leeks, we only use the white and the very light green. And you do wanna wash your leeks. So what I did is I chopped the bottom and I chopped up the center so that I could clean out the middle because you do get grit up through those. So make sure you wash your leeks super, super well. That's very important with your leeks. So make sure that you do that. Um, they are organic, but I do wanna point out, look at how good these leeks look and they've been in my refrigerator all this time. So I do have to say our Azure produce is super, super, super worth it. I don't think that, you know, our normal grocery, I, well, it's not that I don't think, I know leaks from the grocer do not last this long. So what we're gonna do now is finely dice our leeks so that we can go ahead and saute this first. And if you don't have a Azure account already, I will go ahead and um, link that in the description box. And I will also probably put it in a pin post too. And if you use my referral link, I do get a um, little referral amount as well, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to use my link. And I certainly appreciate your support. And we're using two um, leeks in this recipe. I'm not sure how much this recipe makes. Well, we got four, four cups, so a fairly decent amount. So I would imagine we're gonna end up with six to seven cups of soup when we're done. So it should serve, I would imagine, four to six people, depending upon how hungry you are. As you can see, I am dicing this. And we're gonna put maybe one to two tablespoons of olive oil. If you don't like olive oil, you want avocado oil, or you wanna use butter or some other natural fat, Go right ahead. It's, it's your recipe. It's your house. You cook with whatever you like. Because things don't stick when you have a hot pan. If you throw things in your any pan, any saute pan, any fry pan, stock pots, things will stick a lot more if your pan and your oil is cold or if they're unseasoned. Because my Movell, let's see, this is 2004. So that, all my copperware is, gosh, it's 20 years old this year. My shun, my shun, I should say, I think that's the appropriate way to pronounce my knife set, is 21 years old. Gosh, it's sort of embarrassing to say that my knives are 21 years old. Five minutes. 
And now that you can see a little bit better, that couple of minutes has given me enough time to clean up the kitchen and reset. And now we need to add approximately a pound and a half of broccoli. And you're going to want to chop your broccoli into florets and small chunks, but I'm using the organic frozen broccoli from Azure, so it's going to be even easier. And as you can see, putting it in my Ziploc bags did not keep it from getting freezer burn. So I am going to switch my method of storing all my vegetables from this point forward into um, using my vacuum sealer because I was I am not happy with how things were stored last year. So I'm hoping to get a better storage method using my vacuum sealer. I don't think that's quite a pound and a half. So I'm going to just give it a little bit more. Oops, I'm just going to put that one big clump and call that good. And then we want this to saute for maybe two, three, four more minutes. And this is why it's so important that you want to put your items in a hot pan with hot oil so that it's not sticking to the bottom of your pan. Otherwise you would have all that fawn stuck to the bottom. And it also helps everything to release its natural juices. And it also saves you all that extra cleaning and scrubbing. So that's always nice as well. And what I like about this soup, it's one of those soups that will come together in probably about 20, 25 minutes, if that. Making homemade croutons is a wonderful way to use up. If you make breads, it's a wonderful way to use up some of your older breads or maybe breads that you're not 100% happy with because homemade bread is never a failure. It's just maybe something you're not 100% thrilled with. It's just a test subject. And for ours, it is just turned into eggs and bacon later. That's all. So we take our carbs and turn them into protein. Broccoli starting to soften. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some homemade bone broth. And again, you don't have to use homemade. Use whatever you have on hand. You know, home cooking isn't about everything has to be homemade. It's whatever you have on hand, whatever you can do at that point in time. Whatever bandwidth you have is what you have at that moment. And some people like to skim off their fat. I don't. I just leave mine in and that is that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the sediment off the bottom with a little bit of hot water. And I don't want to add a ton of extra stock, so I just put a little bit in to grab a little bit off the bottom. And pretty much all of our hard cooking is done. We are just going to simmer this for about 15 to 20 minutes until she's fully cooked through. And then we are gonna blitz it either in a blender or an immersion blender and season it up and dinner is done. And then we're gonna go through our garnishes for this when we serve it up. Now, how hard was that? It was absolutely simple. We've got a fresh, homemade, from scratch dinner over and done in what? 15 minutes, including chopping our vegetable. Okay, let's check on those croutons because my buzzer should be going. Oh, there goes my buzzer. So let's grab our croutons. Oh yeah, they're done. And there are our homemade croutons. And I don't like my croutons super dark. I like a little bit of variety. So we're let those cool off right on the back of my oven. And since my kitchen is like cold, cold, so I'm gonna just let that heat out of my oven escape and warm up my kitchen a wee bit. So, and I'm sorry about this background noise, but like I said, my kitchen is cold, so I have a space heater going, and then I will bring you all back whenever it is time to blitz up our broccoli leek soup and season it up and get this all garnished for dinner. Okay, our broccoli leek soup has been simmering for about 15 to 20 minutes. So now all we need to do is just blend it smooth. And you can either use an immersion blender, which is what I'm going to do, or if you don't have one, you can use either a stand mixer or a food processor. But if you're gonna use one of those two items, what you're gonna to wanna to do is let your soup cool down. 
There we go. And this soup calls for very simple seasoning, which is just salt and pepper, but I think I'm gonna to toss a little bit of garlic in here. And this is just seasoned to taste. And I did puree this to a fine puree. If you wanna leave a little bit of texture, you can do that, or you can even remove a portion of it and leave it whole. And that does need a bit more salt. Yep, that's much better. To make the last garnish, which is the sour cream and chives. Now there's a couple of ways that you could do this. You could either just dollop a little bit of sour cream on top of the soup and then sprinkle your finished soup with a little bit of chives. But because later in this week, we're gonna be having a roast with mashed potatoes. And I always use my mashed potatoes with the sour cream and chive accoutrement into our mashed potatoes. I've decided to do our sour cream and chives all together. So I've already added our sour cream, put in a little bit of salt and pepper and some of the chives. So we're just gonna add a touch more and then sprinkle it in. So this will make the second tablespoon of chives in. And then whatever is left over with our soups, I am just going to put in a sealed container, one of our food prep containers that are linked below and store it in the refrigerator until I need it for our mashed potatoes later in the week. And then that will just save me an extra step in our dinners later in the week. So let's get this all dished out for dinner. 